Chicory is a small purple flowering plant that's actually part of the dandelion family. It has been used by humans for millennia as a type of medicinal plant as some people find it can help with an upset stomach. The plant has a very tough and hairy stem with light purple flowers and you can actually use its leaves as a raw green in a salad if you're looking for a burst of nutrition. You can boil the roots of the chicory plant as a side dish for your meal. Some people actually enjoy roasting the roots of the chicory plant and grinding them up to make a coffee light substitute, though this can be tricky on the trail. Lamb's quarters, also known as wild spinach, is a common weed that is everywhere on the trail. It is an edible plant that's high in vitamins and minerals including A, C, and K, as well as iron, calcium, and phosphorus. The leaves of lamb's quarters are green and triangular in shape with a powdery white coating on the underside. They have a mild, slightly nutty flavor that is similar to spinach or Swiss chard. The young leaves are most tender and flavorful and can be eaten raw in salads or cooked as a green vegetable. The older leaves can be a bit tougher but are still edible and often used in soups or stews. Bittercrest is a small herbaceous edible wild plant that is a member of the mustard family and is known for its pungent, bitter, peppery flavor. Bittercrest grows in moist, shady areas, often along streams and rivers. It has small white or pink flowers that grow in clusters and has long, thin leaves that grow in a rosette pattern. The leaves, stems, and flowers of Bittercrest can all be eaten. The young leaves of Bittercrest are most commonly used in salads or as a garnish, as they add a sharp, spicy flavor to dishes. The older leaves can be cooked and used as a green vegetable, although their flavor is more bitter. Wild leeks, also known as ramps, are a type of wild onion that looks very similar to, well, leeks. They are a bulbous plant with large dark green leaves that sort of look like the shoots coming out of the ground. You'll often find them in Georgia around early April, but do take care when harvesting them. Since these are bulb plants, if you pull up the entire bulb, the plant won't grow back next year. So if you want to harvest ramps, just cut the leaves above the base of the bulb to allow the bulb to grow back next year. For eating, you can chop up the leaves of ramps and saute them with olive oil before adding to nearly any dish. Since these effectively taste like garlic, they're a great addition to most savory meals. Henbit is a small annual herb that is a member of the mint family and is known for its square stems, purple tinged leaves, and tiny purple flowers that grow in clusters. The leaves and stems of Henbit are both edible and have a slightly bitter flavor that is similar to spinach. The young leaves can be eaten raw while the older leaves are typically cooked before eating since they can tend to be tough and fibrous. Henbit is a versatile ingredient in cooking and can be used as a fresh salad green, added to soups and stews, or cooked in a stir fry. It is also used in herbalism for its medicinal uses. A fiddlehead is effectively any baby fern that hasn't yet opened up to reveal its leaves. They look a lot like the curly scroll of a violin, which is where they get their name. You can often find these in early spring and forested areas, though you'll struggle to find them towards the middle of the summer. Hikers can harvest fiddleheads fairly easily since you just need to cut off the top of the fiddlehead with a pocket knife. You can eat them plain, but they taste best when sautéed with olive oil and flavored with a dash of salt and pepper, plus they're high in omega-3s, iron, and fiber. Chickweed is a small annual plant that can be found in spring and early summer along the trail. It is known for its delicate, tender leaves and stems that go well with anything. Chickweed has small white flowers that grow in clusters and small pointed leaves that are arranged in opposite pairs along the stem. The leaves and stems of chickweed are both edible and have a mild, slightly sweet flavor. The young leaves and stems of chickweed can be eaten raw in salads or added to sandwiches while the older leaves and stems are typically cooked before eating as they can be tough and fibrous. Chickweed can also be dried and used as a medicinal herb. Another very tasty option while you hike is wood sorrel, also called oxalis. It is a type of edible green leaf that you can find in forested terrain. Sometimes referred to as sour grass, wood sorrel actually resembles clover, so it can be tricky to identify if you're just looking at the leaves. One way to identify wood sorrel, however, is to look at the entire plant itself. The plant can be up to 15 inches tall, but you'll usually find that it's about 8 to 9 inches in height. The leaves of the plants look like little heart-shaped leaflets, though you may also find white flowers in the spring. Wood sorrel can be eaten in small quantities, which offers a nice boost of vitamin C. The entirety of the plant is edible, and it's best eaten fresh right after harvesting. It is fairly sour though, so enjoy wood sorrel in moderation. Plantain is a prolific plant that is native to Europe but has spread to many parts of the world, including North America and along the Appalachian Trail. It is an edible plant that is high in fiber, vitamins, and minerals, including vitamins A, C, and potassium. There are two common types of plantain, broadleaf plantain and narrowleaf plantain. Both types have long, narrow leaves that grow in a rosette pattern from a central stem. The leaves are green with prominent veins and a slightly bitter flavor. The young leaves of plantain can be eaten raw in salads or added to sandwiches, while the older leaves are typically cooked before eating, as they can be tough and fibrous. 
Plantain leaves can be boiled, sauteed, or added to soups and stews. The leaves can also be dried and ground into a powder to be used as a flour substitute. If you've spent time in North America or Europe, you've almost certainly seen dandelions at some point in your life. In fact, many of us used to play with dandelions as a kid, so you're probably well acquainted with this common plant. Beyond simply being a nuisance to people's gardens, however, dandelions are a very easy to identify plant along the Appalachian Trail. Boasting their characteristic yellow flowers, these plants are a very convenient snack while you hike. You can eat them raw in a salad or you can boil their roots to create a side dish for your meal. While you probably won't be able to make any on trail, you can also find dandelion wine in some specialty liquor stores in nearby trail towns for a treat on your rest days. Often spotted near larger huckleberry plants, wintergreen is a great way to freshen up on the trail. You might recognize the name wintergreen from some of your favorite chewing gum flavors. In fact, the flavor of the actual wintergreen plant is quite similar and will leave behind a great minty taste in your mouth. If you're confused as to whether or not you found the right plant, simply pick a few leaves, rip one in half, and smell it to see if it has that minty scent. Once you find the right plant, you can steep the leaves in water to create a fun little mint tea on the trail. Wild onions can also be found along the Appalachian Trail. They are recognizable by their distinct onion or garlic-like odor and flavor. They have long, narrow leaves that grow in a rosette pattern and small white or pink flowers that grow in clusters. The leaves, stems, and bulbs of wild onions are all edible. Wild onions are a versatile ingredient in cooking and can be used raw in salads, sauteed as a side dish, or added to soups, stews, and sauces. They have a strong, pungent flavor that is similar to domesticated onions and garlic. Cattails are an abundant wetland plant with a unique fluffy flowering spike and flat blade like leaves that reach heights from 3 to 10 feet. They are one of the most common water loving plants and thrive in irrigation ditches, marshes, and on the edge of ponds. The lower parts of the leaves that are less fibrous can be chopped up and used in a salad. The shoots and stalks after removing the outer leaves can be eaten raw or boiled and taste a bit like a mix of cucumber and sweet corn. The young flower spikes or the actual cattail portion that the plant is named after can be roasted and eaten like a mini corn on the cob and the yellow pollen that appears midsummer can be added to flour mixtures to make cattail bread or pancakes with added nutrients. There are a lot of different types of water lilies growing along the east coast, but from all the research I have done on them, I have yet to find a toxic one. The flowers, seeds, and rhizomes of these cool plants are edible and can be eaten raw, dried, or cooked. Boiling the roots of this plant produces a thick liquid that can be used as a gargle for sore throats or as a remedy for diarrhea. A beautiful orange flower that you can find growing along sunny areas of much of the Appalachian Trail, Daylily is one of the lesser known trail edibles. In addition to being very beautiful, Daylily is a great food to cook while in camp. Plus, the entire plant is edible, so you have a number of different ways to prepare it for your meals. One prep option is to pluck the small shoots of the plant and boil them like potatoes, or you can use the orange flower petals to add color and flavor to your salads. The flower buds are also particularly tasty, and you can saute them in olive oil and garlic for a little post-hike treat. Milk thistle, another plant you'll find along the Appalachian Trail, is a plant that grows tall and atop the spiny stalk is a pinkish purple flower that looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss cartoon. If you have the patience to peel back the spines along the stalks of the plant, chop up the stalks and boil them with the roots to add some veggies to your meal.